Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. Today, I'm going to be joined by Dennis Ponton, who is a CFP and a CPA in the state of Virginia. Dennis is a member of MACPA, the Society of South Carolina, the CPA Society of South Carolina, and the Virginia Society of CPAs. Dennis has agreed to be our speaker for our 199A final regulation, which we'll be hosting next week at Martin's West. Before we bring in Dennis, I want to share some information with you concerning our legislative actions down in Annapolis. MSATP has prepared written testimony supporting some, some bills. The first bill is House Bill 450. This bill will allow our Maryland taxpayer to itemize even if the standard deduction is taking on their federal return. So we have given tes written testimony on that, and that will be heard in the house next Wednesday, yes, next Wednesday on the 13th. In addition, there is a new another bill, House Bill 457. This is an emergency bill which addresses the benefit of the penalty waiver. This um, sort of mirrors the IRS notice that came out, which was notice 2019-11, providing a waiver for additional tax under section 66 54 of the tax code. So again, we have prepared written testimony on that one as well, hoping that that will come through. And again, that is an emergency bill. So we might see some action a little quicker on that one. Then there's House Bill 271, which increases the standard deduction amount in Maryland for the Maryland taxpayers. Um, so that is a gradual um, increase. So we, again, we've provided written testimony, and the hearing for that is also next week. So we will be down in Annapolis um, actually viewing the hearing and actually possibly speaking as well. Just interesting fact, this week is um, the time period in which the um, legislators have to submit all their bills. They all have to be submitted by Friday. So as of this time last week, last Friday, we had a total of 965 bills that were submitted. Now, compared to last year, that 965 compared to last year, which we had 1,602 bills, which is quite a difference. That's 637 bills less this year than we did last year. Now you're saying, well, why is that? Why, are we, what's going on? Well, just that my thought and my opinion only is that possibly, you know, during this general assembly, we saw one third of our general, general assembly change. We had 61 new legislators down in Annapolis. So I, it's good to see that maybe they're taking some slow steps, taking in learning the process before they're jumping right into it. So I have to applaud them for taking it slow and learning the process. Now, as you know, uh, at the end of January, the IRS released the final regulations on 199A QBI. Many of our members attended seminars in the fall and winter that looked at the 199A. And we spent, tax speaker Ed Gear up, spent some time on, on with this subject during the presentations. But even if you heard about these changes in those months, these regulations address expands on many issues that were really um, unknown at that time. So that's why we decided to have this host this seminar. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Dennis to the show. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, Sandy. How are you this morning? Great. Now, Dennis, you're going to be presenting a three-hour seminar on February 13th at 8.30 because of these new regulations. I know this subject could not be timelier for our, for our tax practices. Why is it important for a tax practitioner to attend this, this event? Well, the, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, when it added Section 199A, that is probably the most significant piece of legislation we've had since 1986 reform. Uh, the, the Reform Act took us a little bit of time to understand. Obamacare obviously took time, but it was phased in. Section 199A started in December of 2017 as about 11 pages of law. It was immediately changed on March 22nd. We had over 240 pages of proposed regulations issued in August, and final regulations were issued in the middle of January, which is another 247 pages, making no less than 35 changes to those proposed regulations, 
And two weeks after the final regulations were issued, they issued another correction to the final regulations because they didn't quite put the, the appropriate spin or words on the section 743 or se yeah, section 743B uh, basis adjustment and the way that they defined excess basis that would be allowed for the unadjusted basis immediately after acquisition of property. Um, what hasn't changed really are the mechanics of computing the deduction. Mm -hmm. But what they have done, they have added so many different layers in reporting the information. And I've seen a lot of discussions on message boards. And there are certain things that I don't think practitioners have even discussed at this point, knowing that uh, as a perfect example, you're trying to report wages. Did you know that there are certain elements to your wages that will qualify or won't qualify? If you don't send them in timely within 60 days, your wages are zero. Wow. They're zero. And if you have to file a corrected W-2 and you, if you file the original one on time, you're okay. As long as you file the corrected one, okay. If you didn't file the original one, okay, in, in terms of the time frame, you're never going to get wages. If you if you get into a situation where you're supposed to file a corrected W-2 and you do it late, uh, it's it's the government's way of having their cake and eat it too. An increase in wages is ignored, but a decrease in wages must be used. This is something I haven't seen discussed anywhere. I mean, these are some of the small little nuances that are in, in this existing law that practitioners had best be made aware of. And they really need to understand the distinction between an SSTB and an other qualifying trade or business. Wow. Wow. You're right. I mean, I've attended a couple of the tax speaker and the Garrifts, and this is the first I'm hearing about this whole W-2 situation. So this is, this really is some new information, which a lot of people probably did not hear about, which is going to be very important. It's, been, it's not that it's new. It's actually been there since August. But it was never discussed. Nobody has discussed it. Right. A practitioner, you know, you, you don't know what, what dangers you face if you don't understand the law. Right. You don't understand the law. Right. And, you know, we were talking offline, Dennis, about our softwares that, you know, a lot of practitioners have become very comfortable with their software. I mean, this is one of those areas you cannot be comfortable with your software. No, you cannot. You cannot. You need to. You need to understand the mechanics of this deduction, so that when you're looking at a tax return, and unfortunately now you are being forced to look at a completely different tax return that has zero flow. Exactly. Okay. So you're now you're looking at three or four different pages where you used to be able to look at one. <laughs> your 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 attention span is directed in so many different places. You need to get this one down. But but they're only postcard size, Dennis. That's but the great thing. Well, they are. <laughs> you and you just fold it in half. There you go. That's exactly what it is. But I, I, don't, know. I don't do tax returns for postcard folks. No, exactly. Postcards when we're on vacation, not to do tax returns. That is crazy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So I know that, you know, our presentation, we have three hours. Will the attendees be hearing any case studies? Will you be sharing any case studies in your presentation? I have, I think, no fewer than 15 examples of the mechanics of the deduction. Um, they, they run from the simple uh, taxable income exception method to where you're the general rule, which is where you're over the phase out, and then there's the phase in plus the SSTB phase in. Mm -hmm. I've got a loss example. I have several different examples in there. I know that the three hours is probably going to be compressed into what two and a half hours of actually speaking time. Uh, I, um, you know, I, I, if I can get through it, um, I think people will have a really much better handle on it if they don't now. Mm -hmm they leave and that is my expectation i mean my expectation is not to present 199a my expectation is for me to teach you 199a because if i'm not teaching it to you i'm not doing my job wonderful that's great 
That is, that's really great. Because like you said, it, it is so many different nooks and crannies with this that, that you have to be taught on this subject matter. So I know, like you said, from the beginning that it came out in March, then we had the proposed regulations in August, some final regulations, and then we had to correct the final regulations. What do you think? I know in your crystal ball, what do you think? Are we going to continue to see updates and changes on this? Oh, absolutely. And there's no doubt in my mind, because if you read the, the final regulations, one of the things that you will see in their summary of comments, if they are going to continue to look at or review a particular issue. In other words, they're not prepared at this point to opine on it, but they will in the future. So you are going to see, as time goes by, a, a progression of adjustments and additions. No doubt, wow. no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my I, mind. No doubt. Do you think we'll see anything, you know, before April 15th, or do you think it'll... Or do you think well, it's going to be? I think one of the one of the one of the the built-in uh, safety features in all of this is they are where generally they're not going to allow amended returns to do certain things. Okay. Or allowing you to amend your 2018 tax return to elect aggregation. Aggregation is a is a big sticking point, and it's something that people just simply need to understand why a company would do that. And obviously you would do it mm -hmm. to increase the section 199A deduction. That's the only right. reason to do it. There's no other reason. That's that's the reason to do it. But because it's, it's a situation where, well, I take a look at a set of facts and circumstances, and then I get into the following year, it's like, oh, gee, I wish I had aggregated. Well, the government's telling you, no, you can't do that. Except oh. for except for 18, they're going to allow you a look back for 18. Oh. So recognize the challenges that are facing practitioners and taxpayers. They're being about as accommodative as they possibly can. So take your time when you're making these decisions and understand how they will affect you going forward. Make wow. sure that you are you are you are putting in the required disclosures in tax returns because this was one of the changes in the final regs is that if you don't do that, the commissioner has the ability to come in and disaggregate those businesses. That was in the proposed regs. The final regs say, yeah, he can not only can he do that, but you cannot re-aggregate those trades or businesses for three years. So you're stuck. Wow. So make sure that what you've done, you've done it correctly, uh, at, you know, to the to the benefit of your taxpayer and to protect yourself as well. Right. Wow. Wow. Now, I know you've written um, articles concerning this topic as well. Um, is there anything that you have written that you we can or we can track with you if you are you going to continue to write about this topic? Uh, I, I haven't continued to write what I originally wrote. I wrote back in January of last year, as a matter of fact. I mean, I jumped into 199A because the tax, you know, the funny thing about the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is most people look at it. It's like, well, they took this away. They took this away. I can't do this. I've limited over here. <laughs> thinking, well, it's really easy to, you know, remember all the things I can't do anymore. What did you give me? Where are the right. jobs? You know, so I threw myself into 199A. Um, no, of course, just as soon as it gets published, Congress reconvenes in March and they change the law. So, you know, it got a little outdated and it made it a little difficult to go back and try to, to change it. But like I said, what didn't change were the mechanics of the deduction right. at the individual level. Um, I don't have a blog. I haven't blogged anywhere. I mean, I, it's, it's all I can do just my, myself to keep up with all this. I mean, if you think about it, it started as what, 11 to 15 pages of law. And that's right. all you know. And then all of a sudden in August, you needed to know a whole lot more. And yeah. in, in January, you needed to know even more and forget about some of the stuff you learned in August. Right. Oh, my God. So, well, I'll tell you, it's going to be a pack fill three hours. I really do believe that with all these changes. And like you said, with 249 pages of law, how can it not be? Well, I, and I know I do want to share with the audience that um, as a small gift for everyone that attends the live event, um, CCH, I don't know if you guys can see the CCH put out a nice slick sheet, like start here and go through. It's a real quick 
guide on your 199A. I mean, it helps you. It's a tool. It's not the law. As you said, you always have to do your due diligence and make sure you do your research. But like I said, this is a nice little tool to have, you know, right by you with your quick finders and your quick facts. So when everybody who attends the live event will get one of those. So it's a nice benefit. And we'll share that with you as well, Dennis, and make sure you get one as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Dennis, I can't express my thanks enough for joining us this morning. It was great talking to you. And it was interesting. I'll, I'll just give a quote from one of our members who, um, when we put this out here, and she actually has been keeping up on the 199A. Um, it says, if you think you understand 199A, think again. You really need to come and hear this update because of all the nu nuances. So I, I think that really sums up the whole presentation. That, and the need to be there, so that, which is great. That is. So, I can spell 199A. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a great start, you know. And from there, we just we just learn we learn something new every day. And yep. I, I'm thankful for the opportunity, you know, to have put myself in this position because I get a lot of questions. So when I get the questions, it's like, well, you know what? We didn't think about that. I don't know mm -hmm. how to address. You know, and this is this is what practitioners all throughout tax season are going to face questions. Yeah. Questions, yep. questions, questions, and they need to know the answers. Yeah, or at least things? know where they can go to find the answers. Well, they might not know. That was one of the things that I tried to to put together in the in the final regulations. They listed section by section. One ninety nine a the regs themselves, and mm -hmm. what I did was I took that information and I and I put it into a PDF to make it a little easier to find the items that you're looking for. And I provided the page references so that oh, if, wow. you, if you understand how 199A and the regs are laid out, you know, what they're covering, what is what what is dash one, dash two, dash three, up to dash six, what is it? You know where to go. You look for the item that you're looking for, and then you can find the page reference. The other thing is that if you take that, those, those final regulations and you give them to folks and they have them now housed on their computers. If they know how to use Adobe, they can go in and search for something specific, looking for specific language. And the Adobe will filter through those 249 pages very, very quickly highlighting what it is that they want. This wow. is words. So it's understanding the tool. So I'm trying to give you, the government gave us the information. I'm trying to make it a tool to make it a little bit easier for practitioners to to uh, to function during tax season. Right. So. And, and everyone that attends the event will be getting that information um, when they arrive, either um, either the day before or the day of the seminar. So, which is great. And thank you so much for doing that, Dennis. That's, mm -hmm. like you said, that's a very valuable tool and it's going to be very useful in their practice. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, Dennis, well, I'll see you next week. I'll see you on the 13th. Yes, and I look forward to it. And, and have a wonderful day. You now, for our good. audience, I just want to give you an update for next week. Next week, we are blessed to have Phyllis Burlidge back with us. And Phyllis will be um, on the show. And she will be giving us some insight on some bills that are going to affect our business clients. I'm really looking forward to see Phyllis. Um, we haven't had her on the show this year. And so it, it'll be a great program. So far, everyone, I want everyone to have a wonderful day. Stay warm and we'll see you next week.